so this is an introduction into matrices. Uh, here, I wrote down two equations, and I converted these two equations into a matrix form. So the way you do that is you have one equation here, and then you just take the coefficients, and then you just write them like so. So I took the first one, the first coefficient on the x, and that's a 1, and I put it in this slot. I took the second coefficient on the 3, and I wrote it in this slot. Then I took the, uh, the answer to this equation, and I wrote it over here. I did the exact same thing for the bottom equation, and I wrote it right over here. This this whole uh, matrix right here is called an augmented matrix, and it's called the augmented matrix because it has the the constants on the end, and that's why you see the dashed line right here. Now, uh, why don't you go ahead and try to do this one? Now, if you pause it, then great. Otherwise, I'm going to continue on. So here, I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to write the bracket. And then I'm going to take the coefficient on the x, and I'm going to write it right here. And now, as you'll notice, uh, I, I did these maybe a little bit different. It's, if you look here, this one has an x and a y. And this one has an x and a y. But down here, you actually have an x and a y on top, and you have a y and a z on the bottom. But you don't have an x. So the way you do that is you start off with the x's. And this will be the x column, where you put all the x's right here. And this will be your y column and this will be your z column and this will be just your answers, your constants. So let's come over here. Do I have any y's? I do. A negative 2. So this negative 2 will go under the y and since there's no z's here I'm going to put a 0 right there and then I'm going to write my constant right here for 3. Then I'm going to go down to the next uh, equation and I'm going to deal with that one. So there's no y here so I'm going to put a 0 for the x column I'm going to put a 3 for the y column, and I'm going to put a 4 for the z column, and a 1 here for the, for the constants. Now, when you do do these, you're not going to write these. So I'm just going to delete them. And that's how you would write this matrix uh, off of these two equations. Now, the reason you're doing matrices is because it's it's often a lot easier than doing uh, the old method or the the way you learned before how to how to solve for simultaneous equations. Now, uh, so basically you're doing it because of this. So a solution to a system of two or more linear equations is the point where the equations cross slash intersect. The system can have one or more solutions so long as they cross in other places. And we'll have no solution if they never cross. So, I mean, when you're solving these equations, you're actually solving for that point uh, because that's the actual, or one of the solutions, one of the possible solutions to the equations. Now, you can either have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. If they only cross in one spot, then you're just going to have that one solution. If they are parallel, for instance, then they're just never going to cross. Or if they're right on top of each other, then they're just going to have infinitely many solutions. So here, I wrote these three equations again, and then I converted them into the augmented matrix form down here. Here you have three variables, x, y, and z, and you have the constants. Now, sometimes how you're going to see these is that they're going to be written a little bit differently. They'll take this first portion of the coefficients, and they're going to call that just uh, matrix A and they'll just write it like this and they'll leave off the constants on the end and then they'll write the variables the the x y and the z they'll write it as matrix x like okay i forgot to actually mention something on these uh... you'll notice that there's an x right here but there's an x in here too and that throws lots of people for a loop uh, so you know i wish they, i wouldn't have done this but they, I did, and so do a lot of people in uh, when they write the books. This B is actually a capitalized and bolded, which I try to make it extra bold to, to really make it look different from this one. This X is a variable, and it's lowercase, and it's not bolded. And this is just represents a variable. It does not represent the matrix. This X, which is uh, which is capitalized and bolded, represents the actual matrix. 
Uh, so yeah, you just have to be aware of that. This x is completely different from this x. This is a variable and this is a matrix. And matrices are always capitalized and bolded. Uh, and the variables will be lowercase and not bolded. So yeah, just uh, look out for that. And uh, Yeah, so let's continue on with the video in this fashion. And then you'll see the constants as b. And you'll see in a lot of your textbooks that you'll see a or matrix A times matrix X is equal to matrix B. And that's how you'll see them written. Now, sometimes you'll see on the matrix, you'll see numbers down here. And the reason for that is that what, the way they say it is they'll be like, this is matrix, this is a, an M by N, or A is an M by N matrix. And what they mean is M represents the, the number of rows in matrix A. And N represents the number of columns. So in this instance, I wrote A is a 3 by 3 matrix, which actually corresponds to this guy over here. Because A has three rows, so here's one, two, and three rows, and it has three columns. So here's one, two, and three columns. That's why it's a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, uh, what kind of a matrix do you think X is? Well... Well, try to figure out what X is and what B is. They're going to be the same thing, but uh, let's see if you figure it out. Anyhow, uh, if you paused it, great. Uh, now I'm going to continue. So here is matrix A, and if you notice, it has one, two, and three rows, and just one column. So uh, matrix A and matrix B are actually going to be a three by one matrix. So X is a three by one matrix, and B is a three by one matrix a three by one matrix. So the next thing we'll get into is the Gauss-Jordan elimination method and that'll be on the second video. So anyhow, I, I hope you like this brief introduction and uh, we'll, we'll get into a little more heavy in the next ones. Alright, have a good day. Bye.